Mitchell Robinson sounds off. Was he justified in doing so? Well, welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watts UK99. Thank you as always for taking the time to watch these videos. If you're brand new, welcome aboard. Please like and subscribe. If you're returning, welcome back. I appreciate your time. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about the New York Knicks and specifically about one center, Mitchell Robinson. So the Knicks just came off a four game road trip where they won the third and fourth games against the Lakers and the Blazers dropping the first two to the Kings and the Clippers. And it was a it was a good comeback victory over Portland, you know? Got to be good with going 2 and 2 out west. And then Mitchell Robinson takes to social media, specifically to Snapchat, and he basically is venting about how he wants the opportunity to play basketball. He feels like he is just wasting away on the court, basically doing cardio, just running back and forth but not having a chance to show off his skills. I got to say this, I always have had a thing for centers, you know, growing up a big Patrick Ewing fan. I appreciate that Robinson is a little bit of a throwback player. I really like the defense and the rim protection and the ability to block shots. It's just the kind of player that I've always enjoyed because those players are a little hard to come by now more so than they were, you know, back in the 80s and the 90s. But I don't really believe Robinson has a play. Why is he doing this after a victory, after a hard-fought victory? You know, maybe his playing time is diminishing a little bit as Isaiah Hartenstein is getting more time. You know, by the way, you know, with this bench between Josh Hart and Isaiah Hartenstein, I think the Knicks should just call their uh, bench the Hart Foundation. <laughs> if there's any old school wrestling fans out there like me, you know what I'm talking about. So here's the thing with Robinson. I looked at his stats to see, you know, what kind of production he's giving now compared to what he was uh, giving the Knicks over the last couple of years, and it's not that drastically different. You know, this year, I'm just going to run through these really quick. He's playing 27 minutes a game, averaging 7.5 points per game, 68.8% uh, from the field, field goal percentage, 9 rebounds per game. Last year, he was playing 25 minutes per game, so actually less, scoring 8.5 points per game. Field goal percentage was a little higher, about 76. Rebounds a little less, 8.6. But here's the thing. Robinson will always play between 20 and 30 minutes a game. His points have been consistent. His rebounds have been, for the most part, consistent, but they've been going up a little bit over the last couple of years. Here's the thing with Mitchell Robinson. He has a high field goal percentage because he always plays near the rim. He's putting back rebounds. That's what he does. He dunks, he has lay he does layups, and he does that well. He plays good defense. He's a valuable piece. But here's my question for him. Mitch, you're basically being used the same way that you were for the last couple of years. If you're so miserable, why on July 1st of 2022 did you sign a four-year, $60 million extension to stay with the Knicks if you're so damn miserable? What is with that? You knew how you were going to be used. You knew what your role was. You have the same coach. The only thing that really changed was Jalen Brunson adding on to the team, and he's making everybody around him better. What the hell do you have to be upset about? You know, you're playing essentially the same number of minutes, giving the same production. Here's an idea. Mitch, and I'm saying this as a fan of yours, if you want to be used as a bigger part of the offense, Maybe develop a jumper, a mid-range game? How about developing a little bit more than just putbacks and dunks? Maybe that would benefit you. Maybe that would make you even more valuable. But the Knicks look at you as valuable. They paid you $15 million a year. And you should be appreciative of earning that money. So I just had to get that out. I, I, to me, why Mitch Robinson feels it's a good idea to whine on social media after a win? It just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, he's being paid, he's a valuable piece, and he is on the best team that he's been on since he's been here. That's something to be happy about. So if he's going to be this much of a malcontent, you know, I don't want to move him. And to be honest, the contract would make that uh, very difficult to do anyway. 
But boy, oh boy, I, I hope his coach, I hope his teammates are having a conversation with him and because he's got he's got to get his mind right. He really, really does. Because to complain after a victory, you know, it, it just the timing of it is just very, very weird. And yeah, if he wants to be a bigger part of the offense, well, make yourself a bigger part of the offense. And, you know, as good of a defensive player as you are, you have room to grow on offense. Go do it. It's really that simple. So those are my thoughts on Mitchell Robinson. I want to see your thoughts. Put them down in the comments. Was Mitchell Robinson justified in going off on social media about his role on the New York Knicks? Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.